here. The meeting is being recorded. So uh, what we need to do then is to invite people into the channel. I want to click on manage participants. That's the first thing, because as you can see, it will list all the individuals that are going to be in this particular channel as I'm talking. Now, the next thing I want to do is invite. Now, here you'll see I'm going to invite, there's a contacts li contact list and an email list. Right now, I'm just going to click down here, copy invitation or copy URL. Either one of those is fine. It's the same information. The invitation just happens to be a little bit longer. But for now, copy URL. The invitation URL has been copied to Clipboard. Okay, now I'm gonna go over to my Facebook here, and Eric is in the other room, and I'm going to copy and paste, send that to him right now. There we go. And he's clicking on that. Do, 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 waiting for him. There we go. Hello, Eric. Welcome to ESL Revolution. <laughs> Hi there. Um, perhaps close the door and then we'll have more privacy. There we go. Hello, everyone. Okay. So that is the basics on uh, just getting the whole system started, sending out the uh, URL to your students. And there are various ways that you can actually do that. You can send it through Kakao Talk. You can send it through email. I think most of us would probably be using LMS. So I would suggest copying that URL about five minutes before you go online or on live, send that out to your students uh, as an announcement, then they can click on it via the uh, LMS that you've sent it and boop, the program should up and work. Of course, they need to make sure that Zoom is downloaded on their platform or if they're using their phone, that they have the app ready to go, right? So that needs to happen before the class begins. All right, Eric, what do you have to add to all of this introduction? Okay, well, the, the main thing is, you know, it, it sounds like online teaching is something difficult with many things to figure out, but with the Zoom app, it's super easy. Basically, you just go into Zoom. It doesn't have a big install process. We will show you some of the settings that you can do, but, but, that you can change, but it's so simple. Basically, you start a meeting, copy the link, send it to your students. They click on it. Maybe there's a short install, but it's so quick. And then you've got a meeting. And this, this basically this website, Zoom, is amazing. It allows you to do almost anything you want to. And it's simple to set up, simple to use, and that's what we want. So um, yeah, BJ and me, we're going to, BJ and I, we're going to quickly um, do this video to show you um, why are we using Zoom, how to use Zoom, and uh, also some activities and ways that you can improve your experience and work with the students. Yeah, guys, this is what we have to do. This is the future of teaching, and this mm -hmm. is the simplest way to do it. Yeah, let me just add that one thing too, that, you know, we, we've been in a position now for several weeks where we really do need to get into the teaching aspect of our lives. I mean, this is why we are here. And, we have the tools available to us. We can, you know, we can do doc document dumps on, on LMS. And I think a lot of people, that's what we're doing. That's what we've been doing last week or the last couple of weeks, you know, just putting out the syllabus, maybe little videos, introductions, et cetera. But one of the big complaints that I've been reading with university students, not just in DCU, but in other locations is they have all of this money from our tuition and we're not actually engaging in learning. And Zoom is the tool that we can use now to make sure the students are engaged in that process. And as 
foreign teachers, I think it's important that we are front and center. We are at the vanguard of that online, ter uh, online teaching. But very helpful because then, of course, we're not going to have any negative feedback coming back to the university about us. Oh, the foreign teacher didn't do this, or we didn't get this, or we've done conversation, but we never talked, blah, blah, blah. There's all sorts of arguments or all sorts of criticisms that can come up. Whether they're valid or not, those criticisms can be there. And Zoom is the way to negate a lot of those criticisms just like that. So that's another reason why I think having Zoom fully operational with all of your students across the board at the time allotted to them in their regular classroom schedule, uh, definitely a way of, of well, managing the, the them are basically... and managing us. There are basically um, three ways to teach, right, online. The first way is re you record yourself. It's basically a lecture le lesson. And most of us, for our first lesson, we recorded ourselves and we gave the information to mm -hmm. the students. And then the second way is one-on-one, -on -one, you and me talking now. What's fantastic about Zoom is you can have all your students um, using Zoom at the same time where you act can actually engage, ask them questions, and you can put them into different groups, which is basically teaching. Yeah. Now, um, wh what I want to say is that, um, yeah, you can record a video, but if you've ever done live where you, <clears throat> instead of making videos, making videos takes a long time and you want it to be perfect. What's beautiful about being live is you can actually talk with the students and it's, it takes up, 20, 30, 40 minutes of your life. Whereas when you make a video, you have to edit and do a lot of work. So going live is way easier. And I would uh, suggest that all the teachers do it like this. Um, okay, so Ben, uh, let's quickly um, uh, just point it out for the, for the teachers out there. Why are we using Zoom? It's super easy. It's better to reach the students. It's uh, very simple and what other reasons are there? That's basically the reasons I'm using it for. It's simple and it's, yeah, it's easy and it's very useful. Yeah, simplicity is definitely a key in this, not only for us as users, but also for students as users. Um, the other thing that's really nice about Zoom is it's multi-platform. So you can use it on your phone, you can use it on a laptop, you can use it on a desktop. Uh, and, you know, maybe some students don't have a webcam. Well, they've probably got a computer in their pocket. So they have direct access to that link. You can go through Google Apps or Apple Store. You can download it. It's a free app. You can sign up. Um, if you have a Google account or a Facebook account, you don't even need to create a username and password. You just sign up through Facebook or through Google and boom, you're into it and you're ready to go. Makes the process very, very easy for the students in order to, in order to, to kind of get them to where we need to see them face to face. This program definitely uh, allows that to occur for sure. Yeah. So that's just by, this little video is just by way of introduction the future videos that we have set up are going to provide a little bit more detail as to what the program can do and how that can serve your teaching needs and the learning needs of the students themselves. So we're going to be spending the next several hours making all these videos for you, getting them up, getting them ready. We're going to be posting them in the DCU uh, Facebook page, we will be connecting them to our individual Facebook, uh, YouTube video pages as well, so you can connect to us through there. That's all I have for the introduction for now. Eric, do you have anything that you'd like to add? No, I think let's uh, finish the video here. Just this is a quick introduction, and now we'll show you the different parts that you can use for uh, Zoom. All right. We will see you in a few seconds for video two. Thanks very much, everybody. Take care.